For number one, looking at hypothesis test, there's always two parts like this. In the first one, we call it H sub naught. It's an H with a zero down below. It always has an equal sign. In this one, we're saying that our null hypothesis is that the population mean is equal to five. And then our alternative hypothesis is an H with a 1 down below. And in this case, our alternative hypothesis is that the mean is not equal to 5. And anytime we do it not equal, that's a two-tailed test. If we had a greater than here, that would be a right-tailed test, where we're seeing if our sample is way out in the right tail of the normal distribution. And if we do a less than, that would be a left tail test. And like I mentioned, we're testing the mean here. So population mean is our parameter being tested. For number two, we have a situation where six years ago, we had this percentage of registered births were to teenage mothers. And the sociologist believes that that percentage has decreased since then. So to set up our hypothesis test, you have your null hypothesis with the equal sign, and we're going to assume that the proportion is still what it was six years ago. And our alternative is that it has changed, that it is now less than that. So this is a left tail test. And then definitions of the two types of errors that can be made when you draw your sample. One is you get a sample that's really far in the left-hand tail, and it makes you reject the null hypothesis and conclude that the alternative is true. And that is a type one error if, if that rejection is actually a, mis a mistake. So in fact, in reality, if you looked at every single possible birth, this is the true proportion. But just based off your sample, you thought you had enough ev evidence to reject it. So that's a type 1 error. A type 2 error is the opposite. You take your sample, and you don't reject that. You think there's not enough evidence to conclude that this is wrong. But in fact, if you had looked at every single, um, every single birth, you would see that this is wrong, and that the proportion has decreased over time. But just based off your sample, you did not reject it. So that is a type 2 error. Number 3 is really similar to number 2. So I'm not going to walk through that here. Um, leave that one for you to try. Um, just like number 2, just with some different values here, talking about means instead of proportions. So number four, we're saying we're supposing the null hypothesis is rejected. So what's your conclusion if you reject the null hypothesis? And your conclusion is always that you're going to accept the alternative hypothesis. So you should write down what the null and, hypoth null and alternative hypothesis are based on the statement. The null would be, so this is similar to number um, two again, null would be that our proportion is equal to this value still. And our alternative would be that it is a value greater than that, because notice here it has, it has increased since then. And since we're rejecting the null hypothesis, we're going to accept this alternative that our proportion has actually increased. So there is sufficient evidence to conclude that the percentage of teenage mothers has increased. And just to point out, if the null hypothesis was not rejected, and that's the kind of language we use. We never say it's proven true. We just say it's not rejected. Um, so B would be the correct choice if we were saying it's not rejected. There is not sufficient evidence to conclude that the percentage of teenage mothers has increased. So don't get that confused with A. We would never say something like this, that there is sufficient evidence to conclude that the percentage of teenage mothers has remained in the same. A is basically saying the null hypothesis is true. And that's not the type of language we use. We either say there's not enough evidence to reject it or that there is sufficient evidence to reject it and then replace it with the alternative. And number five here, again, is similar uh, to number four. 
So three years ago, this was the mean price of a single family home. So our null hypothesis is that the mean equals this. Our alternative is that the mean is less than that because we have decreased. So if the, whole, if the null hypothesis is not rejected, that means there's not enough evidence to reject the null. So there's not sufficient evidence to conclude that it has actually decreased. So once again, we wouldn't use language like C, where it says there's not, there is sufficient evidence to conclude the mean price has not changed, because that's basically saying there's evidence that our null hypothesis is true. And that's not the language we do. That's not what we're trying to show in a, in a hypothesis test. We're not trying to prove it's true. We're either trying to prove that there is reason to reject it in favor of something else, or that there is not enough evidence to reject it. We're not trying to prove that it's true.